Hey, you have tuned in to the Bernard Williams Stay In Your Lane Show podcast. And tonight we got a special guest. I am your host, 2000 Olympic champion Bernard Williams, and we have a special guest tonight. We are on episode 29. That's right, episode 29. tonight once you get in here what up hoodie yes sir <laughs> you already know what's happening big homie what's going on brother everything good hold on let me see if i put this this way if it's better yeah, can you hear me good the champ is here <laughs> can you hear me good yeah i can hear you we can hear you perfect perfect Man, What's man. Happening? So, um, so tell us, man. Let's get right into it. Let, I'm, I'm gonna just go right into it, ladies and gentlemen. It is an honor. It is my privilege. It is my duty to announce this 2008 Olympic champion and good friend of mine, world champion, uh, entrepreneur, professional, um, motivator, mentor. This is none other than Lashawn Merritt. What's happening? What's happening? <laughs> What's yeah, up, everybody? Right. What's today? On a on a uh, on a Wednesday. Wednesday night. Yeah, man. Um, so tell us, man, who is Lashawn Merritt? Uh, Lashawn Merritt is a is a kid from Portsmouth, Virginia. Son of Brenda and Owen Merritt. Uh, was raised with respect and the will to win, and I he ended up putting a formula together both mentally and physically that was able to inspire and let his light shine through hard work and dedication, man. And he was one of the best in the world at one time. He's a son. I, I He's still think you can go out there and get that medal. Man, I had this toe surgery. After that toe surgery, it was hard for me. Yeah. But I got it here. I got it here. I, I just feel like I could close my eyes and, and, and get it. That's the muscle memory. Man, now see, I know, I know that you've been gifted genetically, right? Yeah. Um, did your mom and pop did they participate in sports? Neither one of them. My mom really? was a my mom was a nurturer. Where growing up, everything was about uh, me having fun, so there was never any stress. My dad, <laughs> he say I got the genes from him, but he never played sports. He was a he was a cool guy. He was just real cool. So I got this the coolness but didn't really care about it from him and i got just that nurturing able to be in the moment and be calm and be humble from my moms man that's cool yeah. that is cool now do you have any hidden talents we don't know about like artistry or so i grew up uh, my dad is a musician he sings he he, he plays the uh drums my aunt on my dad's side used to travel and sing um, gospel when, when um, especially when they started, when, when Tyler Perry first started doing those stage plays and everybody yeah. was doing plays, um, my dad would participate, my aunt would participate, my godmom, who's my aunt on my dad's side, plays the organ. So I have this musical bone from the, my dad's side. And fifth grade, fifth grade through the 12th grade, I played the trumpet and the tuba and the baritone so I could read right. treble clef. So you telling me, you being a musician probably helped with your breathing and winning that Olympic? Absolutely, goal. absolutely, man. Cause, cause we were taught how to circular breathe, where you can kind of blow a note and kind of hold it and circulate through here from the breathing to the the rhythm, you know, understanding yeah. cadence, nice and, and everything. So one of the things I used to do, um, I used to wear the sweatsuit on purpose to hear when I'm warming up, to hear the swish, 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 rhythm, to hear rhythm. that cadence to make sure I was on. So oh, all that stuff is playing a part, man. But definitely man. the breathing, definitely the breathing. Wow. Now, um, I know track and field is your bread and butter. That's your thing. Yeah. But did you have a favorite sport? You um, like your first love sport? Before Baseball. Track? Baseball. You know yeah. what? The way you wear your hat, <laughs> it says everything. <laughs> It says everything. 
I was a baseball player, man. I started baseball when I was six years old. And my brother played baseball, and he was five years older than me. So I kind of follow his footsteps through life. Um, and I like baseball. I pitch. I play shortstop. So that was my first love. I don't have a, a favorite baseball team, but baseball was my thing. Man, that's crazy, yo. Like, I did not know this. See, this is the cool <laughs> part about doing interviews. You're like, yo, Rick, you thought you knew this, brother. <laughs> No, man, I'm getting yeah. to know you today, man. Good, so man. when you played the trumpet, um, did you have any inspirations like certain musicians? Like lately, since I've gotten older, I've been listening to um, Miles Davis and Dizzy Gillespie. Those are my guys. Okay. You know, to the point where my, my brother played trumpet. Uh, my dad played more of a, when I, growing up, I can remember him in the living room with an amplifier and his guitar. Just playing notes. Um, then my brother started playing the trumpet. I started playing the trumpet. My brother was a big fan of uh, Miles Davis. Miles. And I became a fan. You know what's so crazy? I, today on my live, I posted uh, a, uh, an album of Miles Davis. It calms me, man. And, and even yeah. when I started running track as a professional, I didn't listen to any music, like hype music. I listened to jazz, actually. Mm. Yeah. So I never That's had crazy, any kind of yo. hype. No wow. white songs. It was all jazz. Right. And you can see it because when you run, you run with a certain rhythm. With a certain rhythm. Like, yeah. Uh, one, one <laughs> of my, yeah, one of my favorite uh, jazz songs is uh, by Miles Davis. It's called So What with John Coltrane. Mm -hmm. and, and I can picture you running with that song. <laughs> <laughs> that is cool, yep. man. Now, I have, a, yeah. um, I have an athlete that went to East Carolina. He played baseball. Okay. Um, Josh Moylan, and now he, he, he's been drafted by the uh, New York Yankees. Okay, so, congratulations for that. Yeah, thank you, man. But um, he, he tells me, like, East Carolina, like, yo, the Pirates, <laughs> man, ain't that, he go down there to kick butt, take names, yo. That's it, man. Did you think about playing baseball when you was down there your freshman year? You know, I, uh, when I started running track in high school, it was during baseball season, I believe. So okay. I stopped playing. I played baseball from like six years old up until high school. Wow. Then I stopped. And then I started playing football a little bit. And the team wasn't good. And I was in right. the band. And I played football. So I would like <laughs> have to be at band practice. One time, sometimes I would do both. Like halftime, right. I would play a little bit in my uniform. I remember playing one time oh. in my football <laughs> uniform. <laughs> Bro, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was so crazy. They're like, yo, <laughs> oh man, that is cool, bro. But I love oh, East man. Carolina, man. I wasn't at ECU for long, but I got there. The, a, a story I don't know of a lot of people know either was my 12th grade year. I was number one in the U.S. I had won World Juniors um, yeah. in the 400. This was so 2005, I could go to school. 2004, right? 2004. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously, I'm can go to any school. East Carolina was three hours away. And before I even started running track, my brother, five years older than me, was one of the guys who, when I was hitting home runs or getting on base or stealing base or making touchdowns, he would give me $5 here, whatever here he sold, yeah. little whatever he did on the side so he had a little extra money for me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, so. Yeah. Which, which is which is something I do with my nephew now, just kind of right. that thing. Um, yeah. But going into ECU, my brother got murdered his freshman year in college. Oh, man. So he went to Shaw University, and he never oh. even got the chance to see me run, which is crazy. And he was such a bigger light than I am, um, from ladies' man to whatever he was doing on the side to class clown to – Mm. The, the the whatever right and i didn't want to go that far away from home right so condolences, that's why I condolences brother yeah no no i appreciate that i appreciate that so not wanting to go too far from home i picked east carolina and i was already um i had a great relationship with the coach i was wearing nike at the time in high school just like i had never worn adidas and their program was adidas so he told me if I came there, he would switch the whole program to Nike, right? <laughs> so I went, 
And this was November, September, October, and I went and I ended up turning pro in like February. Man, God. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, yeah, but I, I enjoy hey, ECP. You for Nike. Yeah, and I went, but I stayed with Nike. Yeah, he, right. was, he was a little mad, but uh, it was still, it was cool. Yeah, was cool. man. Yeah. Now, um, what was what was uh one of your biggest challenges, like as far as like injury or, or mentally? Mm. Injury wise, two thousand and twelve. Right, 2011 was the hamstring tweak. Yeah, that was 2012. 2011, yeah. I was diving with Karani across the line and at World Championships. I was number two in the world, 2011. So 2012, I was coming back to say, okay, yeah. I'm ready. And I had an undefeated season that year. I had one yeah. Olympic trials. I won yeah, the fastest four. time in the world. Yeah, and maybe two or three, two me, two or three weeks before Olympics, we ran in Monte Carlo. My Monaco. favorite place to run. Yeah, favorite place to run. Yeah. I remember getting out well. I was on. I got down the backstretch. I was feeling good, and I got in that curve, and I felt a cramp in my hamstring. Mm. And I decided to cycle again, and I just stopped. And it was a small tear I had in my hamstring. I went to London to try to. I mean, I was doing um, hyperbaric chambers for like six, seven hours a day. Mm -hmm. I was getting cold laser done. I was doing all kind of stuff. But the first round, I couldn't make it around. I could have stayed and enjoyed it. But I think the next day, I hopped on a plane. I told my agent, I'm ready to get up out of here so I can get this healed as soon as possible yeah. so I can come back next year and handle the business. And end up winning 13. Yeah. I didn't have an undefeated crazy. season in 14. Like, you overcame that, right? Yeah. And then you got another medal the next Olympics. Yeah. yeah. So, you yeah. know, um, I mean, we go, we're going to say it's faith, right? Yeah. But um, what was, other than the hyperbarics, like, what, what was it, what did you do mentally to get back into, like, medal contention? You know, how did you get right back and really, like, because sometimes when you, after you injure yourself, sometimes you kind of hold back because you don't want to hurt it again. Right. What did you do mentally to kind of get back to uh, metal contention? Uh, I made sure I understood the process that I was going through and that it took to get back to 100% when it happened. Mm -hmm. So I knew the first step was to get as much treatment as done as soon as possible and then start your rehab as soon as possible. Um, and with knowing 13, there was still a world championship and with knowing that the sport is all about being your best self, because everybody's not going to be number one in the world. Every day is not going to be the best day. But if you can prepare and get yourself ready for when it's time to do whatever, you're get, you, you, you've set yourself up to uh, be your best self in moments. So, mm -hmm. and luckily I had great people around me. Dr. Pascal is a chiropractor I take with me all the time. So I spent time in his office. Um, just different therapy, but from a mental state, I never get too high or too low anyway. You know, when I win these things on this high level and people see it as maybe a 10 on a level of achievements, I've always wrote it at like a seven or eight, meaning I'm grateful for what I've done and, and, and appreciate uh, the gifts I've been giving me and the ability to focus and stay locked in, mm. but it's all about getting it done again. So I right. take all, even the highest, achievements uh grateful but all lessons for something next something greater nice now yeah. who inspired who inspired you when you were younger like when you was mm -hmm. a young kid like coming up starting the 400 who mm -hmm. inspired you that's older than you when you, right. that you used to watch uh the, the the weird thing is i didn't start running the 400 until my junior year in high school mm -hmm. and before that i didn't really watch track Oh, snap. I didn't even know about the sport for real. It was football. Ah. I didn't even know you could do it. So, and I started running the 400 my junior year because the football coach was a track coach. So he made the football team run track. And yeah, nobody shout wanted to out, run. Shout <laughs> out to the football coach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then it became the 400 who nobody liked to run that. And it was like, he was cussing us out. Yeah, but real men run the 400, isn't that? And I said, man, I'll run it.
Somebody and that said one Woodrow, time I said, somebody said Woodrow Wilson. That's the high school I went to. Okay. Hey. We got to <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I said, I'll run it, man. And yeah. it became more natural and than any other sport I did. I played baseball, football, but those are all team sports. Mm -hmm. And when I ran that 400, I won. I didn't run that fast, but I was like, I'm naturally better than a lot of these guys in this. So right. Like, hey, stay on this. The coach was like, you could do this. You could be this. You could be this. I mm. had great people around me. Yeah. I kept a core group around me who always poured into me from my household to my coaches to my friends. Like, I still have the friends I had back then. And they still pour into me as if we were in high school, man. They, they love me to death. I love them to death. But the inspiration, because I turned pro three years after running an event, two years. I started my junior year, I turned pro my freshman year, right? I had never Ooh. seen the Olympics before that, which, right. which is crazy. Right. Uh, <laughs> and when I came in, I studied, um, I studied Michael Johnson. There we go, I was waiting on it. <laughs> yeah, I studied Mike. And, the reason, <laughs> and the, the reason I studied Mike is because I felt like we were built the same, we were muscular yeah. guys. Six, two. Uh, both of us, both of us had, uh, Good turnover. Yes. Both of us had that speed type quarter mile. And he was the one out there at that time who was that guy. And yes. Jeremy was dominating at that time. So I studied him too to beat him. That was to study him to beat him though. <laughs> right. <laughs> now look, I know you got the gold, you got the silver, you got the bronze. But can you take us through that gold medal race? Gold medal. 2008, 2008. When the gun go off, the gun go off like bow. Take Gun go off, man. Uh, I'm thinking, get to the top of the curve. Get to the top of the curve. Push, push. Use the ATP. Don't be afraid to use it. Just use it. I get there, and it's all about body checks. When you already come in at a certain level, it's all about those small details at that point. So I knew I had the heart. I had the the will to win. I had the, the 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 preparation, but now it was just a matter of executing all these small things. So, gun go off. I get to sixty. I feel good using my whole, my body like I need to. I pick up my extra man coming around that curve, which is just using the body, using the arms a little bit because the arms is rhythm. I knew the arms was rhythm. That's that jazz music. That. <laughs> What is it? It, it? The arms is um, balanced rhythm and force. Mm. So coming around the curve, I knew I had to use these in the right way. Man, when I got down the back stretch, I felt so good. It was all about just stepping. Let's get down this back. I didn't hear anything. It was just let's step through this. I knew where my marks was because I had ran the race before. I had walked the track. I knew who was in the lane. I know how they ran their first round and their second round. Mm. I knew what lane they was in, so I was comfortable in that lane, in that space, with everything around me and the track. So it was just a matter of going out and handling business at this point. So, so, so get did, down the back. So did, you know, so did you know you was going to win? Uh, no. No, I knew, <laughs> I, knew, I knew I was ready to bring my best self. Right. I knew that. I knew my body felt good. I knew mentally I was in a space where I wasn't stressed. Coach and I had had amazing workouts before that. The rounds went great. I studied the rounds, so I knew kind of what to expect from other people. At this point, it was just going who was going to bring the biggest heart. But I was, yeah. I was, I was there to win. He um, said, "Don't be afraid to use the ATPs." Now you said you're going down the back stretch, right? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm listening. <laughs> so you're going down the back stretch, right? So, so I'm going down the back stretch, and I had raced all these guys before. So it was like, I got to own this. I got to have this. I'm getting on the back stretch. I'm moving. When I get around the curve, I remember 150 to go body check. Now try to make this look pretty as possible coming home, which means relax as possible, but give the energy like you ready, like you trying to win this. Yeah. So it was all formed. That's why I was so formed up coming off the curve and coming off the straightaway. I knew at any moment Jeremy had the ability to just pull up on me. I knew it. Right. At any moment he had the ability to just come and run right by me. So I, I was thinking, come off the curve, focus on 
running downhill and keep the fundamentals. Mm. Go, go to the basics. Go to the basics, which was keeping my chin down, keeping my arms open, filling the track, not bouncing up and down, keeping a lean. And halfway down, I was able to look at the jumbo trying. When I saw I was way out in front, I yeah. said, I did this right. I had no this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. Which ended up being a special moment. Now that I think about it, I never dreamed of like winning the Olympics until I actually was training for it. I didn't grow up in this sport. Right. So it wasn't a thing that, oh, I need to win the Olympics. And I felt like it was going to be this huge thing. I knew it was right. big in the sport. It was the pinnacle of the sport. Right. But I took it like every other race. Right. And I, mean, I knew the magnitude, but I didn't allow myself to get too outside of myself that I couldn't stay within myself. Nice. And I handled it, man. Um, yeah, yo, you champ. Hey, and, and across the finish line, and then crazy thing, made it, it's like, okay, I'm champion. Now I really got work to do. Because now everybody gunning for me. Now, but, but, I, but I didn't, uh, I, took, I, I, I took that on. You know, I, I realized yeah, yeah. I won it for a reason. Um, I did put the work in it. Mm -hmm. um, this is something I've been blessed to be able to not only have the DNA for and prepare in a certain way for, but to be able to execute in the moment, which is a unique thing. So it had to be special some kind of way. Right. Now, do, would you consider would you consider this your most memorable moment, or what? What was your most memorable moment on the pro level? Most memorable memorable would be 2000 and that that one because it was my first one. Yeah, my first Olympic Games. Um, my coach was a guy from Norfolk, Virginia. I was from a small town in Portsmouth, Virginia, and uh -huh. I was up to face the world, the giants of the four hundred. The world, which was Michael Olympic Johnson, champions, world champions. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh world record holders so so jeremy yeah. warner at that point his mentor was michael johnson who was the world record holder and his coach was clyde hart who was the guru of the 400 so i'm this small guy from portland going against the history of that event yeah shout out so, to, shout out to coach d man definitely definitely <laughs> man, definitely Wait. so so to be able to handle that with that with those opponent with that group and right. win uh that was special man that was special. it was and it was cool it was it was a it was a pleasure to watch because yeah, i was man. watching on my tv i was like i know him that's my dog right there <laughs> yo yeah, but man. i never knew that you had studied michael johnson then now i think about your running style very similar yeah you know and, and you both were fast than the 200 too but now if you really had a chance to concentrate on the 200 what time do you think you would have really ran? I think you went nineteen eight, bro. Right. I think I. I no, think 19, I was it nineteen seven? Really, I went nineteen seventy something at one Ooh. point, uh, but never trained for it. Even right. When, That's what I'm saying. Was, what do you What do you think you could have ran? Being realistic, I think I could have went like nineteen four or five. I only say that because I never did a lot of uh, speed endurance. Right. So when I think about speed endurance, I mean, some coaches I did, Lawrence Seagrave I did, Dwayne I did some, but with training for that too, I feel like if I, if I would have had more speed endurance, um, I would have been able to stay in a sprint position longer. Because mm -hmm. I run the 400 and train the 400 in so much rhythm, mm -hmm. I, get up, I get upright like this and just turn the wheels over. Yeah. As opposed to handling some hard 250s, hard 180, 150, 120, right. and learning how to stay in that angle um, and right. hold that angle. I think if I would have did that and knew how to do that or, or, or dial it in so much that and that maybe the coaches were scared to give me that because they thought I was going to use it on the back stretch mm. and then mess my race up. Because sometimes <laughs> I would run a fast 200, but then I would mess the 
backstretch of the 200 up sometime. I'll get into too much of a, a right. spread deal and, and take my cadence out. Uh -huh. But I think around 19.5. I can see that, bro. Yeah. I can see that. <laughs> you know, I can see that all day. And, and doing curve work and right. actually understanding the curve and everything. So I was 400 meter runner. That's one of the things I wish I would have did more, but I've always had a toe issue. Every time I did a lot of cur curve work, mm. my toe would bother me. Yeah, that's but centrifugal I, force. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if it's because when I first came in, I was told that I was supposed to wear the spike like a glove. It was supposed to fit tight. But as right. I got older in my career, it was all about being able to use the, like, use right. the toes a little bit. Yeah, have right. some space right. because you use the toes. So, yeah. Yeah, man. Well, it's nothing but greatness, bro. So, who yeah, was man. like in your in your successful career? Who was your uh, the most like? How can I put it? The one who gave you a challenge every time you got up. Who was that? Your favorite competitor that you knew you had to be ready for? I that had one to. guy. I oh, that one guy out of you know. You said, man, I got to get ready. I I can't. Who's that one guy? Was it Jeremy Warner? Was it was it Karani? Was it you know New Carolina? Um, like, which one? I'm trying to think which one. It was definitely Jeremy. Jeremy, definitely Jeremy. I would I would think Jeremy or Karani. I mean Karani and I battled also, but Jeremy right. could lay 43 five out on you. Yeah. He, oh, like he'll pull away from you if you if you not ready like he embarrass you <laughs> like but he ran that way right which was yeah. one of the reasons was one of the reasons why in 2008 when it came to the four by four i had mm. won the 400 right and i knew it was going all things going well with each leg we had, we was set up to win the four by four it was me angelo taylor who had won 400 hurdles right we had jeremy we had david neville yeah so, my thing was, I'm not a runner who go out and just can blast it, right? Right. I've always, t I saw the sport, I never want to be a household name, this type of stuff. I saw the sport as like this business. So right. if I could run a race and run and win as easy as possible to get to the next race throughout yeah. my career and make my money, that was my thing. I wasn't trying to run these crazy fast times. So when it came to the four by four, I said, look, if we got a chance to get any type of record or whatever, put I want to run first leg. Let Jeremy get at the end and run his heart out if you want to, like you right. do. And I got more TV time with first leg. So, because <laughs> <laughs> normally uh, the anchor, the, the Olympic champ, always brings it home. Yeah, but we 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 was in a in a position where if we were gonna go for a record, I knew I know these guys. I knew he was gonna be able to hammer it coming down the last hundred, if it was just him by himself. We was right. out by himself, he was just going to go get it. And I feel like I could go get it too, but that's not how I kind of ran before right. in my right. regular. So I ain't want to, I say, yo, I'll just do my deal first leg and let y'all handle it, man. man and we got well, gold. Congratulations, man, bringing the golds <laughs> home many, many years, the silvers and the bronze. You got all of them, yo. <laughs> I think you're probably the only 400 meter runner to have all of the medals oh, in the in three different Olympics. Oh, maybe. Yo, yeah, I'm for real. Either because okay. because if it, Michael Johnson, he did it, but it was all goals. But I'm talking mm -hmm. about all all the medals. Oh, gold. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. man. Like Butch Reynolds, maybe. Maybe Butch Reynolds. But I have to do my research. I have to do my research. Yeah. Possibly. But, man, but, you the man too, man. You you got all your you got all these medals too, man. Man, man you, this you, is your, you OG. This is your, man, I appreciate it, man. But this is your interview. <laughs> I respect you, man. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. So um now that you're now now that you are inspiring the youth, um right. tell us about your organization. So I got a couple of things going on, man. I have my foundation, which is the LaShawn L. Mary Foundation, where I've had over the years, I've worked with people, I've stopped working with people, but just recently, uh, I'm getting back into this group of people and we're focusing on resources, uh, a holistic approach, mind, body, and soul to success and to life. 
mm. um, inspiring, motivating. I've always did that with the kids. Like I said, my mom's in the school system, so I've always did that. But now, outside of the sport, I see how much of an influence I am all around. So I'm still uh, focused on the kids with giving them resources, giving them hope, the inspiration. I, I see how I touch them when I come into a room, how they light up. So they recognize my light, right? And I understand how important character is, especially at a young age. Character has taken me far, it's put me in rooms I never could imagine, right? So to be that person of character to kids, it matters to me. You know, and I had people who believed in me when I was younger. And that spark of belief, man, can take you a long way. Mm. So I'm I'm pushing that narrative with the foundation. And I'm also doing uh, speaking. I just got into a room of speaking. I'm learning the language. I've got with some great people. Uh, it's something that I didn't feel like I had experience with but i've been doing it all my life with interviews and talking to kids and inspiring but i was so close to it that i didn't see the magnitude i was doing it just because and maybe i was just called to do it that they, they, they it was set up that way that all my life i was talking and inspiring and just a lot of it just from telling my story but mm -hmm. now with the speaking there needs to be some structure and i'm turning it into a business so I got to learn the language um, and take the same approach almost as I took with the sport of track and field. You know, I had a formula I developed here for success. Mm -hmm. And with the track and field, just the DNA put me at a level. Then I had to create this formula here to get mm -hmm. those small things that made a big difference. But I realized in that then I've done something unique and people see it in a way. I step into that lane already with some dna almost yeah. because of what i've done right absolutely so at it that way so now it's just a matter of me making different things and the way i took it relate to certain audiences man so second job i've ever had that i feel like i'll get paid for track and field was the only one so now i'm kind of <laughs> it's just getting into this speaking room and i'm yeah. doing uh speed camps yes i kind of got a this, this guy was with Nike and I'm partnering with him to do speed camps um, and give back that way. With coaching, I don't have kids, I don't have a wife. I have six nieces and nephews, but I'm not in a position right now where I feel like I wanna coach kids every day okay. and be that father figure and be that mentor. But I do have uh, things to give and, and inspire. So I'm gonna do those and through the foundation, do these camps in the inner cities for free. So yeah. uh, just trying to work it, man, find out who I am, what I like to do, because the whole sport of track and field, the inspiration behind that was for my brother, Ben, and he didn't get a chance to live out mm. anything really in his life. So now that that's over, I pull everything into that. After the sport, I dealt with an identity crisis because it's like, okay, who am I? What do I like? I did that for him. Mm -hmm. But then I realized that I – have done a lot and it's all about serving at the end of the day so if i can serve and be of service to the world by showing them how i handled a situation that was so unique that made me the best in the world and they can take something from that i'm all for it nice all for it, man. well said but i mean um i know you're a force to be reckoned with man <laughs> um do you think, well, today I, I read on Sha'Carri Richardson, right? Okay. She, she was talking about how um, the USA track and field and how they don't pay the athletes. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel professional track athletes should be paid? Absolutely. I feel like, I definitely feel like they do. I feel like it's one of the sports that, it's a contact sport. The amount of force you apply on the ground, man, you you can leave training and feel like you got hit by a bus. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, the account is crazy. <laughs> the accountability it takes. 
I think the thing is, there's so many levels to being a pro in the sport, opposed to you make it to the NBA, you're on a team, or NFL, you're on a team. And you can be on a team and be on the bench and make $10 million a year, $5 million a year at this thing, and Facts. you never even get in the game. Facts. And we show up and put our bodies through this stress, physically, mentally, daily, mm -hmm. um, and get peanuts compared to that. Facts. They do, man. Uh, I think they should get paid more. I think they should be um, marketed more, advertised more. Um, I think the the people that's had a lot of success in the sport from in the U.S. should be noticed more, mm. uh, appreciated more. And it's fun. It's crazy because when you do step in the room, they appreciate it. But there's right. not from the from the the I don't know what it is. It's 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 I don't know if it's the marketing or what, but I definitely feel like at the top level, we are just as competitive and we work as hard and as blessed just as much as these other sports. I 24 agree. hours, it's 24, it's 24 hours a day training. Whereas you train half the day and the rest is the rest of the, the rest and recovery is just as important as the training. So right. that's 24 hours. Right. Well, I think a solution, me, I'm on outside. See, I don't got no contract, so I could talk, I could talk my noise, you know. <laughs> I think that the money that they get from the metal count, mm -hmm. that should be split between the athletes. The okay. athletes don't get paid any of that money. And I just believe, I think they got like 700 million, I believe. From the metal counts? From the metal counts, close to that 700 million. Yes. Now, I'm not going to disclose my resources. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but but that's, that is the number that I'm hearing. And okay. so they say when you, when you run for your country, you run for your country, and you do it for the love and the red, white, and blue. But I feel that the, all of the athletes, and that's in every country, mm -hmm. they should get a piece of or some of that or half of that seven hundred million dollars um, and yeah that's one of the solutions the other one i think we should get uh full dental i agree fits. if we've been we got arthritis author you know that author be calling no <laughs> we got arthritis and, and and tendonitis i think you know they should be able to cover us for life I um i know that i'm reaching right now but I think if you ever ran for Nike, you should get a lifetime of Nike gear. <laughs> especially if you, if, especially if you, if, if you, you got, if you got a couple level. level. Yes. Right. Absolutely. You should get a, a lifetime of Nike. You or something when you're done. Huh? Something when you're done with them. At something when you're done with them. But, but you it's know, I'm, I'm, I, I kind of got to shut up because I signed an okay. Adidas contract after. <laughs> I kind of messed up the relationship. <laughs> I was Nike. I was Nike. I was Nike. Um, all my life, man. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it, but but there is nothing afterwards. Right. I mean, it is what it is. Right. Yeah. I think we should get that. Like the stuff that Allen Iverson got and and Shaq. Yeah. Like they still have a brand. They still put them as like president of Reebok. Now right. I okay. know nobody's wearing Reebok right now. Right. But the point is, when you think about Allen Iverson, I hope he's still getting a lifetime of gear because he stay fresh. Yeah, hometown guy. And right from Virginia, area. right. Virginia, yeah. man. So, yeah, man, that, that's what I think that some of the solutions should be for some of our track athletes. And Shakari, I don't know you personally, but I appreciate you stepping up and speaking because a lot of people, like myself, will keep their mouth shut so you can keep getting your check. <laughs> right, 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 right. But, so but I, I respect yeah, you got the ones you got the ones that 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 live out loud and those ones push agendas and make change sometimes, man. So right. Yeah, shout out to her, man. I'm off shut too. I was just trying to handle my business. Right. I ain't <laughs> too much attention. I was like, yo, I just need to. I got already got enough stress through this whole 400. Like right. Brain. <laughs> my business but i mean you, you get to appreciate the people who uh no. not afraid 
to, to stand up and speak their voice. And some people are just like that. They, they don't get any, they don't feel any type of pressure from living out loud or speaking out loud. But then you have some people that if they feel like they do that, they have to compromise. Yeah, you kind of compromise. Or, yeah, all this type of stuff. So mm -hmm. I respect it. Yeah, man. So we got, we got word association. So I'm going to just sh shoot the word to you. And you don't have to shoot one word, but just let me know what, what you're thinking when you hear this word. Okay. All right. First word, Virginia. Athletes. Oh, okay. I thought you was going to say home. <laughs> no, I think athletes. athletes. I think home too, yeah, because yeah. you got you got you got you, you got Mike Vick, you, you got yeah. man, you got so many. First, you got no, Alan, no, no allows. Yeah, no uh right now hurdler. Um I can't think Hunter Hurdler, guy who went from Florida. Mm. Uh, uh Dominic uh, Holloway. Holloway. Yeah, okay. I went. Yo, I ran in his meet last year. The Grant Holiday. Okay. He has a, a, a indoor meet where it's called the Grant Holloway Holiday yeah. meet. Yeah. yeah, I ran that. Now I'm not gonna tell you. I, I went like six nine, but <laughs> <laughs> hey, ain't no thing. Hey, you out there? Hey, you out yeah, there. I had the wheels going, man. Right yeah, but I would say home. I would say athletes at home. Athletes home. at home. Bet. Okay. Yeah, man. Okay. Um, favorite comedian. I like Chris Tucker. Oh man! <laughs> come on, man! What about me? I thought I was hoping you said me. Like, come on, man! Damn. <laughs> Next, <laughs> my new favorite. All right, uh, cool, cool. When I, when I was young, um, so all right, so now, um, speed. Hmm. Hmm. When I think of, when the first thing comes to my mind with speed, I think of angles. Got you. I think of angles. Okay. Next one is car. Rose. Wow. I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> you're going to say Lamborghini or something. You said Rolls Royce. <laughs> nice. All right. See, um, I say, so, so this is the difference, right? That's the difference. <laughs> between a sprinter and a 400 guy right I'm thinking fast fast i'm thinking cruise luxury 400 get around bowl not room it's just style get around <laughs> going back to that jazz. Car. going back to that jazz yep yep, yep. man <laughs> okay and the la uh, last word is our family love nice love and support man i've been fortunate enough to have two great parents mom and dad my mom always told me to go out and have fun my dad has always told me even if i even when i went to the olympics he could be boy that was good but you ain't seen nothing yet boy, <laughs> you got something big i'm like yeah i just went to the olympics hey okay so I, I still got a lot of life to live and that's just the first step, first chapter in life, man. So I look to inspire. I look to motivate. I look to learn more about myself on this journey of life and um, just give as much as I can because I, I, I start to notice as much it, it, when I think about giving, mm -hmm. the universe gives me. Mm. And that's been happening in my life. The more I give, the more I tend to receive. Mm -hmm. And the stars align and... I just got to stay the course just like I did in this first chapter with track, man. So family has always been love and support for me. Man, deep. Yep. Yeah. So now we got verses, man. You know, this is kind of like barbershop talk on this one. Okay. But um, I always wanted to know, you know. So MJ versus LeBron, who are you going with? Damn. I grew up in that MJ area, man. I grew up in the MJ. I'm gonna go MJ. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. So, okay, Bulls or Golden State? Golden State. Mm. But the Bulls got three, two, three peats. They do, man. They do. But Golden State they played each other at the Saints. Uh, I would say I'm only gonna say Golden State because. 
Yeah, they killed it though, the way they wanted though, right? And they was just so strong. The and Bulls they got KD though. Yeah. Then they won without KD. You right. You right. Yeah. So uh, they, 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 they handled it. <laughs> right. All right. So now, uh, Muhammad Ali or Floyd Mayweather? Mm. Who, who would you pick to be the actual GOAT? Because I am a person of like character. Um, and I understand how character can see both of them got their own. I listened to both of them before I, the night before I ran a competition. Before I ran, I always listened to athletes in individual sports, the greats in the individual sport, because they would just interviews of them or whatever, because it comes from a different place than team sport. You know, it gives you this extra fire. But I would say, mm, who's the GOAT? Hey, I'm gonna, Diamond, I'm gonna, I'm gonna Ali. Diamond said Ali was an activist. I, I'm going to go Ali. Ali had a lot to deal with, a lot more to deal with, I feel like, just in right. life in general than uh, Mayweather. Yeah. So all around, Ali had to hold it together in some times and execute in totally different era, but I, I still like Ali. Bet, bet. All right. This, this is a good one. Uh, Sidney McLarkin or... Uh, Camacho Quinn. Sydney or Camacho. Um, they both went to Kentucky. Yeah. Both hurdlers. Man, Sydney tough, man. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when Sydney was young and she was, uh, I'm going to say Sydney, just got, I had a relationship with Sydney. Sydney and Pascal, Sydney used Dave Pascal early on in her career. Dr. So, Pascal was in the live today. Did oh, okay. It? Yeah, okay. I was going to say, but he was in the middle of some good, some good, uh, some good knowledge, man. So just, okay. But Doc was in here checking you yeah, out. It is. Um, so I, I'm gonna I'm say, I like Sydney. I like Sydney, man. Sydney tough, man. Sydney about business. She don't show a lot of emotions. She tough. From a young age, I've seen her come up when she was 16, getting uh, chiropractic work with Pascal. Both of us in the tent at the same time. Her oh. being nervous. Hey, 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 this dude, hey, man, get off my list, dog. That was coming up. <laughs> What's that? What is uh, that? Shelly, Shelly Ann Frazier Price or uh, Elaine Thompson era? Mm. I grew up with, the, my early years were, was with Shelly, and then Elaine came. Um, I'm a <laughs> Kelly, I'm gonna rock with the OG. I'm gonna rock. I'm gonna stick with the All OG. Right. <laughs> All right, now, um, sitcoms or stand up comedy? Mm. I can do stand up. I like stand up. I like stand up. Yeah. Push you in the moment, it gets you there. Uh, yeah, man. That the 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 comedian has to have it all together. It's that 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 all or nothing one shot. I mean, I guess you can play with it, but it reminds me of the sport. It's yeah. just you got to get up there. You got to be brave. You got to deliver. Right? It's just you. Yes, you. Yeah. Right. So I like that. since we're talking <laughs> about it, we we are into the 2024 coming up. I know it's weird because I know you'd be like, man, around this time I usually be working in here and there. And <laughs> I know, I know you 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 are happy where you are in your life, but who do you have picked to win the four hundred meters, uh, two thousand twenty four? I don't know. Um, it's wide open, huh? Yeah, Stevie had a had a injury this year. You never know how how fast Stevie will, will run. Um, Norman wasn't around. Michael Norman wasn't around much. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Vanika. It's kind of still dealing with injury, kind of. I, I feel like it's wide open. It's wide open. Yep. I now, might start. About, now, do you watch the, um, do you think, do you believe Noah Lyles is going to win the one and the two again at the Olympics? Or do you think the grass is going to win the 200? Mm. The 200, I feel, uh, I feel like Noah may have a better chance than running the, 
winning the two than a hundred. Okay. Uh, but he's strong, man. He's strong. <laughs> he brings it, man. He gets yeah, he into this whole character and he uses it. He 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 studies character. He's he studies this animation. He's like he's he he, he draws and build Legos. So he's detailed and and off the track. So I can only imagine how detailed he is on the track and get us he, 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 he watches superpower hero stuff so he's ingesting it through his sight and his vision and his soul and he becomes this superhero type of person so with that chip on his shoulder and if he's able to stay grounded and continue to execute man i feel the sky's the limits for him uh i love degrassi um he always shows up at big competitions he does he even don't do a lot through the season a lot but when it's time to handle business he usually handle it yeah he's a big so, time performer he is a big time performer man now yeah. do you who do you have to win the women's 100 sharika jackson elaine thompson or uh shakari richardson i'm gonna say shakari i'm going with hometown hey hometown. <laughs> i trained with she now let me tell you i trained with shakari a couple of years ago, I was with Dennis, my last year training almost. I had that toe injury. I just couldn't get back. Right. But geez, geez, when geez, I say, geez. man, when I say she can pick him up and put him down, mm. man, with some power, some force, some ferocity, with attitude, with mm. execution, with grit, with the will to win. Um, it doesn't matter her put getting the race and putting it all together, but the desire, I, 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 I feel like she got what it takes. And yeah. she's from America, so I'm going I'm to ride with it. I'm going to ride yeah, with I'm, it. I'm with you on that, too. Yeah. I believe she's going to win. Now, yeah. I talk. I talked a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I did, yo, and I, I apologize. Shakari, if you're watching this interview, I'm sorry. I was talking <laughs> shit about your nails. I was talking <laughs> about your fishnet. I was talking <laughs> about your weave. Right, I was right. like, she just take all that shit off. Right. She can win it. I was yeah. talking shit. So I'm sorry, Shakari. You proved me wrong. Yeah. Um, I respect what you're doing. And yeah, we, we got you pick favorite to win the Olympics. Yeah. And she worked hard too. I've seen her work. She, hmm. she actually in, in the weight room, in the gym, on the track. She put the work in, man. So I respect I her. mean, you can see it. You know, yeah. she don't have like an ounce of fat on her. Yeah. I just it. believe that she's one of those people that you know how like when you get older and you'd be like what are these young people doing <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you know that's what i was i was the old dude like what are they young they dude, don't fish uh, that. we don't fish <laughs> that. we don't you know right, <laughs> so right i was the old guy looking at how when really she's getting more popularity to our be herself and then when she said that's right I'm gonna be back. I ain't. I ain't done. I was like, man, she sound like Nicki Minaj. Yeah. She said, I'm not, "We're not done," you know. Yeah. And you know, and the Jamaicans was like, "Hey." I <laughs> and then all of a sudden, now a whole year later, boom, beat everybody. Yeah. And it wasn't like they let her win. She snatched yeah. it out of lane eight. Yeah, she claimed it, man. Yeah, yeah. man. So much respect to Shakari, man. Absolutely. Yeah, so um, what would you want your legacy to be, ultimately? Um, I want it to be known for the length of time spent in the sport, dedicated to the sport, which was 17 years at the highest level. Mm. Uh, even if I wasn't performing or hurt that year, I was still putting in the work that year on, on the highest intense work. So from 18 to 30, whatever, I think I calculated it. The time that I was actually training was actually 17 years. Um, Man. And just being a, and being a guy who always had great character, a competitor, and just a good guy. And it was a good guy who was blessed with a talent and maximized it. Um, yeah, a good guy who noticed the gift early and continued to focus on improving that, maximized it, and now 
trying to give as much as I can to the world mm. in the middle of realizing who I am and how I can inspire and motivate. Nice. Now, I, I coach a lot of kids, and I speak as well. Mm -hmm. And um, if you have a message, you know, because I know we're about to wrap it up, but what message do you have for the youth that are trying to get to your level? Not only because you were 18, bro. Right. Like, I remember meeting you and your parents. Yeah, yeah, and, man. And we were I'm on the pro fun. circuit. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, we, I'm like, yo, this dude is a real deal. So, you know, and, and there are a lot of NIL deals now where kids yeah. can get paid in high school, they can get paid in college. Um, what message do you have for them? Because you're one of the first guys to go from a, uh, a, a kid right. to the pros before the NIL. Like, you know, what, what message do you have for the youth, man? Uh, the, the, the ones who, with the, without the opportunities to get the NIL deal, um, I'll say that it's a hard sport. It's a great sport because it teaches character, that accountability and learning about yourself, getting in contact with your inner voice, um, which hopefully is positive. It, if you don't get to my level in the sport, the sport will prepare you for life. You know, it's a lot that you go through in training that it ain't for everybody. You know, that highest level is not for everybody, but it's a beautiful sport. If you take it serious, you'll learn a lot about yourself that you can apply to any other lane in life. So, but the one, to the ones who are at the level of getting that NIL deal and getting the money. And I would say continue to do the basics, uh, continue to have the will to improve. I would say it's a world of distractions right now. So if you're, Thinking about being a professional or being at a certain level, it starts before you get there. So learning how to be what you want to be matters. Mm -hmm. So start being professional, start being respectful, character matters, and be intentional. You know, within this sport, especially, I never was on a huge team. So I never had this team camaraderie where I was distracted by my teammates. Mm -hmm. So I was put in situations early on from high school to when I turned pro that it was intentional and work would be exposed because it wasn't a lot of people at the office. It was maybe me and somebody else or just me a lot of times. So I let them know it's a, it's a tough sport, learn accountability, um, learn business, learn finan uh, financial literacy, and just focus on being your best self. Don't look too far ahead. If you focus on being your best self, which is showing up prepared for whatever you got to do, strengthening your, your physical and, and developing that muscle memory, but strengthening your mind too, because you can train all you want to and this and that, but get in a line and lose it mentally. Mm. So focus on that and train. I feel like coaches should focus on some type of mental aspect of the race a, a lot more uh, than the physical or, or even just as much. I don't know what that looks like mm -hmm. because me as a pro, I've even stepped up to the line and forgot that I did workouts. I don't know how I did. I stepped up to the line before. I could just flush over my body, but then I tap right into it. Like, yo, I'm here in this moment for a reason. I'm here. So I feel like something needs to be done. And, and over the over the years, the, with the mental health and people coming out and talking about how they're stressed here as much as their body is stressed, but they don't get a lot of uh, work done here. I feel like there needs to be work done mentally which is which is missing so with staying humble always being prepared paying attention to details um keeping love and support around you 
having fun with it, all these things matter. It's not just getting in training, running, and you, you doing whatever afterwards. The rest and recovery is just as important as the workouts. That's huge. The training, the, the drills, the form and technique is important. The muscle memory is real. If you do it sloppy in training, you can't expect your body to do something correct when it's time to execute. It just don't work like that. Nice. So I know that was a lot, but no, in, that was in, a nutshell, in a nutshell, just handle your business and be intentional with things in life. Man, well, look, I appreciate you for coming on the show, brother. No problem, man. Uh, everybody, y'all can catch the live. I'll leave it up for a couple of days, but then you can catch it on Spotify and YouTube on uh, for the Bernard Williams Stay In Your Lane Show podcast. And we are signing out with my yes, sir. 2008 Olympic champ, 2009 world champ, silver medalist, bronze <laughs> medalist, like I said, entrepreneur, Yes, sir. LaShawn Merritt, good human being, good Samaritan. Um, are you, you thinking about writing a book, brother? I am. I am. I, I'm also thinking about doing a series of uh, kids' books. So Nice. We have some different things coming up. Yeah. Okay. Well, shoot, bro. Like, I, look, I look forward to having you on the show again, and I also look forward to uh, doing it some speed clinics as well, brother. Yeah, man, definitely. We will definitely link up. Yeah, they say, LaShawn, we want to see you more on IG often. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, look, thanks for giving us your time, brother. I Probably. really appreciate you and the knowledge you dropped today and just Probably. hearing your story. Um, I look forward to seeing more from you. And um, much love to you, brother. Appreciate it, B. I'll talk to you soon. And All right. I appreciate everybody for being tuned in. Yes, sir. All, All right. right. Peace, y'all. Later.